Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. I like to nerd out to the science behind how we can keep our houseplants happy and how to multiply them in our homes. So if you're into that kind of content, do subscribe to my channel and send me likes. So today I'm, I'm undertaking a huge task of reorganizing my balcony, which is a really <laughs> big mess right now. If you see my previous video, I, I think I revealed to you guys that I'm kind of going through a rough period right now of transition. Uh, with my work and also that I have too many plants right now so I'm gonna figure out to uh, maybe get rid of some of them uh, by get rid of I mean probably to sell sell them uh, so I'm gonna start separating the, the plants organizing them seeing what I need and what I don't need I may also do propagation because I actually want this balcony to have a table here where I can film you guys a lot of the repotting and, and all that stuff so I'm gonna have to make sure I have make space for that and also a lot of the place uh, plants now are in the wrong places so I, I need to fix them around as the sunlight is, uh, is changing as we reach the end of the year. Uh, and I may actually move some of the plants outside uh, from the balcony and I also may move some of the plants in here. Uh, behind uh, me right now, there's a Hoya rack, which is probably a little bit too dark right now for Hoya. So I'm gonna be, um, move some aeroids here potentially. So let's see. So where possible, I'm gonna show you the process. Uh, I'm, first of all, I'm gonna give you a quick tour to walk you through the problems. And then I may do a time lapse so you can see me moving around the plants in very fast motion. And obviously, I'm gonna give you an after video for that. So, yeah, let's get this party started. <laughs> so, there's actually a lot of plants here that have to be moved. Uh, this biliotai, for sure, is, I don't think it's gonna be happy here because it's, it's under many plants. This is what the biliotai actually sees. And the reason why um, I put it underneath all the other plants is because. Uh, this is facing north and the direct sunlight is starting to hit this area. So uh, I don't know if I can show you here, but the direct sun is going to be around here. Um, and then as we hit December, the sun is going to be even further uh, down a little bit. So this means that this is going to be uh, intolerable for most of the plants. Uh, this Tomatophyllum cellum is actually uh, a full sun plant it can tolerate full sun and this is why it's shielding all the other aeroids down here from direct sunlight but it's not going to be happy in this shade so i have to figure out to move it and maybe the balcony would be the way to go uh, this philodendron gloriosum is a little bit burnt i lost one of the leaves because it burnt up so i i had to move from the table down here so and that's josie who's trying to hang out with us hello okay so back to this table uh yeah as i look around i think all of these plants have to go like except maybe the fiddle leaf fig and the somatophyllum because they can take uh, direct sunlight all the other plants are going to burn so just keep in mind that the sun does move throughout the years <laughs> and a lot of the plants can't survive in this uh, new situ oh my god look at that that's a butterfly i just saw that Oh nice, look at this. <laughs> it's feasting on my Hoya. Or maybe it's laying eggs. The caterpillars might might eat the leaves later. So this shade cloth is a little bit falling apart. I need to fix it. And currently I actually have two layers of it. I don't know if yeah, two layers of it. And I don't know if I still need the two layers when we're gonna start seeing the sunlight. Uh, dim diminish over the next few months but this is cause for concern because now there's no shade absolutely so it's gonna be pretty direct sun so I may I don't know uh, I may take off one of the layers I guess and see what happens I hope one of the plants will burn up and uh, this tree is actually shedding a lot of leaves it was giving me a lot of uh, shade beforehand so there's like the direct sunlight that's now actually hitting the balcony uh, let me show you right real quick. Um, these are all the leaves that are shedding. I have to clean these up every day. It's becoming a problem. And this silly girl, she, she is trying to reach for the sun, but that's suicide because this direct sunlight is going to burn her for sure. Uh, she was actually grown like a little bit this way before and then she just decided to <laughs> it totally it that way. So I'm going to have to move this monstera around. So this philodendron tortum, it seems to be doing really well in this shelf. It's not too bright. Uh, this one is this alocasia. I don't know what it wants. 
I've killed so many alocasias and I don't think there's pests on it. Uh, but yeah, this is just a, a new growth is coming up. So this is what happens to it all the time. Like new growth is coming up and then it would shed an old leaf. That's just not something that I'm into. Not my favorite growth pattern. So this leaf still remain my arrow eight shelf. I'm just going to move some things around. And I also quite like this setting. This is Celia. I, I took some of the cuttings off. I took five leaves off it to give to people. Um, and this palm, I may keep it here, although it's kind of like annoying. There's a lot of leaves that keep falling into it. So I keep having to clear the area. And this um, this palm would actually provide shade for some of the uh, uh, plants that cannot take direct sunlight. So I may actually move it somewhere else um, uh, on this balcony. I do have two really m crazy shelves here that I keep my potting media in. And there's <laughs> just a lot of plants here. It's just random. That's my variegated Edinsonii. And uh, in case you guys were wondering, uh, here's a quick update. So it is putting out a new leaf and the new leaf is variegated. I don't know if you can see that well here, but I see some white stripes off it. Yeah, it's not going to show on camera, but you have to take my word for it. So I need to fix out, uh, figure out where to put these plants. I just, I need to find the right uh, locations to put them. So here's that Hoya shelf that is I moved half of the Hoyas out of here because it's too dark, so I'm going to figure out what to do. Um, this uh, Canna Lily, uh, I don't like it. I've never liked it in, since the beginning. It's, and it's a very thirsty plant, so I have to water it a whole lot. I have to like take a whole watering can of water just for this plant. And now we have to run back to the sink and get more water. So I may get rid of him because, I don't know, I, it looks good here, but I'm done. <laughs> I have too many plants. So down here, I actually keep a lot of uh, low light loving plants. <laughs> this one's not doing so well. This one is kind of back and forth between doing well and being neglected. So I will have to keep some area like this where it's a uh, more low light loving plants. It's so messy here and I'm so embarrassed. Uh, ooh, and guys, actually one time I was uh, hanging out and I saw a car just drive by here, stop. And someone was taking a picture of my balcony from the outside. So wait, hang on, I'm gonna go outside, I'm gonna show you the view. Cause I don't go get out much as well, so I don't really know what my balcony looks like. So I'm gonna check it out with you guys. But I just thought it's funny that someone decided to take a picture of this balcony. I guess it stands out like a sore thumb. So I'm standing on the main road and that definitely looks like a crazy plant person's balcony. <laughs> so I guess when I redesigned the balcony layout, I have to keep in mind uh, to make it look good from the outside too. So this Hoya Macrophylla, I like it where it is. Ooh, some peduncles are, are falling off. It's giving me so many flowers. It's, this is fl flowering for me every two months or so. So it's quite an interesting species and it's a very old plant. And I have it hanging up there, so I may keep it where it is. This rubber tree loves uh, direct sunlight and it's it's related to, it's like leaning forward, <laughs> trying to jump off my balcony. And so it's this offshoot here. So this is not pretty right now. I have to figure out where to put it so that it looks better. And I can imagine that some of the plants would like to be under its shade as well. Some flowering plants that are hidden back there. Um, there's two parts of it. I thought that it would get pretty good sunlight because it's against the, the balcony railing where this um, the, that's west, so uh, sun would set over there. However, I did notice that it is living under too many things and it's not getting <laughs> bright sun at all. So I have to move it around, I guess. And there's just so many leaves. It's annoying to have to sweep it up and or pick it up every day, every morning. Um, I'm done. So I have to figure out how to clean all this mess. So I'll, I'll, I'll get started, I guess. So I'm gonna leave this canna lily here. It's gonna get pretty good direct sunlight 
And it's gonna be living next to this fiddle leaf fig. I may move it around later and it needs a hard prune. And actually I grew this from seed, so there's actually only one shoot. But then it gave me so many babies. Um, it's quite a common plant, but it's so beautiful and it's a prolific grower. It's just very thirsty. It needs to be watered and fertilized often. So yeah, I hope it likes it out here. And over here we have a, a Monstera. I'm gonna take a cutting and give it to my business partner because I promised her a variegated Monstera. But she has no experience in caring for plants. So she needs to graduate first. She needs to make sure that this is alive. So if you're watching this, I'm totally talking about you. <laughs> and over here I have uh, banished some orchids. Uh, they're not doing so well on my balcony like this one. It's getting super neglected. It's, it, needs every, it needs watering every day actually. And it needs to be fertilized frequently with uh, orchid fertilizer. So I'm going to put it with the other orchids so they can hang out together and get the same care, the proper care. <laughs> so um, next to it, I forgot the name of this guy but uh, he was flowering before and he's, he actually needs uh, direct sunlight. So he gets some dappled direct in my balcony. But I figured I'll put him uh, next to the pole. I'll show you where I'm gonna put him. Hang on. So there is a Sansevieria over here, which is really weird. <laughs> this Gia, hi. Uh, I'm gonna move him away. Ugh, it's heavy. So it's in Pasir Malang. It's a local volcanic rock. It's super freaking heavy. And uh, I think I think this looks better here. No, I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, and. Yeah, I hope it flowers again. It would look so pretty when it flowers. There you go. And <laughs> I've moved some of the plants away from here. It looks so sunny here. It's direct sunlight. So I may actually move my uh, rubber plant, rubber tree <laughs> over here. And actually, I just noticed that this alocasia, <laughs> look at how long the neck is. This is the base. Uh, it actually likes direct sunlight and I made a mistake of putting it here so I may actually move it as well. So I guess I'm done with uh, moving things around. <laughs> it still looks pretty messy here, but I actually went with practicality this time. I noticed that I didn't really care for aesthetic as much, but I wanted to be able to care for my plants easily. So yeah, I'm gonna walk through the species and I'm actually gonna do a tour for you actually. So this video may end up being very long. So let's get started. So when you enter the balcony on the right, if you saw my previous uh, balcony tour video, everything's relatively the same. I've removed some plants and there are some weird uh, containers back there. And this is because uh, there used to be two tables here, which I actually moved here closer to the light. And my uh, soil and media supply was all over the, on the underside of this table and it was super messy. So I decided to move that here and then the, the soil media is actually behind this shelf, like there's another one hiding back there. And um, in this Hoya shelf, there's a lot of them jammed in the back. They don't look so good, but I make do with what I have. And I just want the plants to be happy. I want to be able to repot easily here on the balcony and maximize the space. Uh, speaking of which, uh, this huge Monstera, I don't think I'm feeling it. So it's, oh, it's putting out a new leaf. Oh, how cute. And it's just going to be growing that way and it's going to be in the way because I'm going to be working a lot in this area. So this monster I have to go. I can't figure out where to put it. For now, I have it here only because it's providing some shade for 
my philodendrons, which I brought here from uh, downstairs because of the sunlight issue. That so it's gonna enjoy the the sunlight here for the next, I would say, six to nine months before I'm gonna I can move it outside again. All right, so back to the first area. Sorry, I digress too much. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much the same plants. Uh, there's a uh, Amidrium, uh, this is an anthurium that's really happy. It's pushed out so much growth since my last uh, balcony tour. I may move some of the anthuriums on this shelf as well because the anthurium seems to like this light level and this kind of setting. Uh, and their faces are all facing us <laughs> this way. Um, one of the Monstera cutting is not doing so well. I don't know if it's rooted or if it's rotted, but I have so many of these that I don't care. I'm just gonna leave it there and see if it survives. This other Monstera cutting has given me a new leaf. Uh, and again, this is the Tortum. I just decided to put them together uh, because I had them in different places before. Um, yeah, and then this is a Philodendron Warzawiskii. <laughs> so um, yeah, and my Edinsonii. And here's some hanging plants. Lishkidia uh, Hulpertsia. <laughs> it's not doing well. Oh, it came off, so I have to reattach this uh, later. Okay, I'm gonna put it on the floor for now. Sorry. <laughs> uh, some understory Calatheas. Uh, and there's my Ornata from the previous video that didn't do so well. Uh, it's been neglected. So yeah, this is a low light area that receives a lot of humidity because all the plants are grouped together. And some of you actually mentioned, you know, what happened to my Calathea white fusion. And I think I managed to I got the hang of it, there's a new growth coming out, I don't know if you can see it right there. Uh, I think I got the hang of it. I've got another one downstairs that is actually doing really well. So um, the key to this is to water it twice a day, never let it dry out. Uh, bright shade, I would say, or medium indirect light. And it likes to be grouped with other plants, it doesn't like to be alone. So it likes to party with other plants, <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah, and actually did a uh, project. Let me see if I can find it. Give me one second. So here are some reverted uh, Calathea white tissue that I did a project on. Oh, it's, and it's growing. Uh, I'll put uh, some pictures on the screen now because that's before I cut it. So a seller actually told me that they tend to revert. Uh, so, okay, when you buy white Calathea fusions, they will die back usually. <laughs> So, I'm sorry to, to be so upfront about it, but they'll probably die and then they will uh, actually uh, regrow again. And the, but the new foliage is going to be uh, green because it's stressed out, it doesn't want to be variegated anymore. So that's what happens here. So in my, uh, so the seller told me that you can actually cut the plant in two. So there's a rhizome area and then there's a root area and then there's a plant. So if you cut just the rhizome area off and you plant the rhizome, I have one here. I have uh, three more pots but they are downstairs. So if you have the rhizomes um, alone, it's going to push out new white tissue leaves. But the green ones, actually the ones that reverted, if you plant it back into soil because it has roots but it doesn't have the rhizomes, it can propagate itself and it will grow into an all green Calathea. Uh, wild fusion. So yeah, uh, this has been uh, like this for about a week. So I guess this plant has propagated itself and it's alive. So I'm just waiting for the white tissue to arrive in the other three pots. So wish me luck on that. So there is my begonia maculata behind there. It's receiving pretty good light, but I realized this morning that I can't really water it that well. It's very difficult. I have to like move the ornata aside to water it. So I may have to find a new place for it. Uh, and then here is my Philodendron 98686, I think. It used to be on the table by itself, but I kind of like it in the same pot with this um, Fupertia and then uh, this palm. So this palm is giving the plants a lot of uh, shade because otherwise it's gonna it's got be too bright for some of these plants. And this Philodendron may also burn if it's on its own. So yeah, I kind of like this setup. This is kind of wild. It's like little missiles like firing, <laughs> firing away <laughs> everywhere. Um, there's a fern here, there's another bird nest fern back there and this needs to be watered every day and it seems to be happy. And then a philodendron elegance, uh, Calathea mekoyana. This one doesn't like to be overwatered, so I put it away from the other Calatheas here which are more thirsty. I <laughs> see brown tips. Yeah, they, this, this needs to be watered every day. I, sp I spray it down almost twice a day. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then there's a biliotai in the back. Uh, it's very slow growing for me. Maybe it needs a little bit more brighter light, but I'll figure out later where to put it. But for now, this is a safe space for it to be where it doesn't burn. 
Uh, this is Medrasina marginata variegata, which is like cute. I actually took a, a cutting on the top and then stuck it into soil, so that's growing. Uh, Philodendron silver sword, which is doing really well. Uh, Melanochrysum, and it likes it. It was living around here at, before, and it's grown so fast. So I decided to put it back on the same spot where it's getting similar light conditions and giving it a new leaf. And <laughs> Down here, I have all my allocasias actually in one row. It may not be pretty because... Oh, that, sorry, this is a, actually a philodendron passizanum baby. <laughs> How cute. But then it's sitting amongst all the other allocasias. This one's my uh, black velvet that the leaf died off. So that it's putting out a new leaf, which is very annoying. Here's another allocasia frydeck and cupria. And here's actually not an allocasia. This is a caladium. Uh, so I have it kind of sitting out here. So the next kind of point, the, the pot can be a little bit inside. And then their necks are just like sticking out to save space I guess and here uh, in this shelf this is where all the popular plants are this is the jocks and the cheerleaders of the plants and yeah you can't really sit with them they kind of you know have on their own world like us nerds like we have to those are the nerds we, we belong over there <laughs> So yeah, they're here and uh, I can give them more attention here because I don't want to mess them up and there's a Calathea, uh, yeah, Calathea orbifolia. It used to be so big, I put a picture on the screen that I got from my mom and I just mishandled it so much. It, I kept changing the media, I was trying to experiment with it and it died completely off. Until, so I cut it off and it grew back um, some leaves. But again, I, I just repotted it again, I keep repotting it because I keep trying to find the right Condition. So it's in a very fast draining terracotta pot now with bamboo and perlite and all that. So it's very, very fast draining, but I do water it very frequently. So let's see if this one will, uh, you know, take off. There's a philodendron lupinum in the back. I've got a few of those cuttings all over the place. So yeah, oh, that's the Edinsonia again. Uh, this is the um, light variegation one. This is the heavier variegation one. This is the pricey one. And this was actually, I showed you guys this uh, two days ago or yesterday when I filmed it but yeah this is putting out a new leaf so happy to hear that uh, over here we have some Hoya this is an allocation I, I this died into a stump so I'm surprised that it grew back so I'm gonna give it a bit more uh, bright indirect light uh, and here I don't know what I'm gonna do I have so many of these basils all over the place and I just don't want to throw them away so I kept propagating them uh, yeah, there's a Hoya over here, Dishkidia, and here are all my popular Hoyas. Again, these are the jocks and the cheerleaders of the Hoyas. I'm not going to spoil to you because I'm going to do a Hoya video later. My Dishkidia, uh, more Hoya. So this is where uh, plants get a little bit more uh, dappled direct sunlight. And down here in between the two tables, um, I have a lot of these shaped leaves, the Caladiums that can take uh, full sun apparently, someone told me. Another Caladium. Uh, philodendron burla marks, uh, variegata, uh, regular philodendron burla marks. And here we have three pots of the uh, alocasia. I don't know how to say that. I put it on the screen and they are uh, variegated. And, and they, they used to be all over the place. I have them in three different places, but I figured to, I'm just gonna put it together because I can't find them easily anymore. There's too many plants. Um, yeah. And over here we have some. Uh, so uh, this lower shelf is always going to be some re uh, rehab area, including that one over there. So these are plants that hasn't taken off yet. So these are cuttings. I have my Peperomia prostrata that is keep dying back. I don't know what to do with it. It's just circling around the pot, <laughs> trying to root itself. Uh, I think you have to be. This is one of those. Oh, it's very wet actually. It's very heavy. This is one of those plants that you really need to be on top of. They do want to be humid and they cannot dry out too much but they're also prone to overwatering. so if you are into babying plants this is the right plant for you but for someone who has 700 plants this is not not the perfect choice uh, some zz plant and hunky look at that little leaf over here from, from the propagation some hoyas back there there's a, actually a baby peace lily here that died back and now it's growing up again uh, some dried up looking hoya that need rehabbing and up here we have a string of pearls. Mine died off, so I'm trying again. Um, <laughs> they they also they're also a plant that you need constant vigilance. You need to check to see if they're dry or if they're, uh, yeah. You need to be on top of their moisture. Basically, you cannot let it dry out too much. Uh, this is an asparagus fern, and they can take direct sunlight. Oh, and it's sharp. It just poked me. <laughs> yeah, be careful. There's all these thorns, but it's grown like 
super long. Let me see where it is. It's like grown down, basically. I can't even find it anymore. It's like super long and viney. Um, yeah, they're quite nice. It provides some shade for some of the plants here because otherwise it will be getting direct sunlight. So this is a plant that can take a beating of the sun. It can also take a little bit of uh, medium light as well. Uh, just make sure that you don't let it dry out completely when it's in, um, in a bright condition where it is now. Uh, it also will forgive you actually, ooh, there's a leaf, oh no. The, it will forgive you if you forget to water it too. So this is a pretty easy fern to have. And down here is a maiden hair fern that I kept uh, struggling with. Again, maiden hair fern may be something that is uh, good if you have more time to take care of each one. This needs to be watered every day or twice a day actually. So yeah, um, over here we have some of the higher light plants um, with the rubber tree in the back. I decided to shove it all the way to the corner because it's so big. Uh, variegated fiddle leaf fig. Uh, I didn't put out any leaves since three months ago. And this alocasia needs direct sunlight. Uh, same plant. And uh, yeah, so basically these are all the highlight plants. And there's an alocasia there. Um, alocasia, what is it called? Um, <laughs> colocasia, sorry. Uh, colocasias and alocasias are a little bit different. So colocasias need to be wet. So I actually water these pot every day, like, like very generously. Uh, because they cannot be left to dry out. They can also take full sun. So yeah, and there's a flowering plant over there. So, uh, this is my skin depths as I consolidated them into one area. So this, I guess, um, yeah, there's quite a few of them. I decided it's easier for me to care for them when they're in one place rather than over all over the place. So um, yeah, here are, is my uh, ex Hoya shelf. Uh, it's still a Hoya shelf, I guess. I, I think uh, I took off some of the Hoyas that were in the back because they were not receiving enough light. This Hoya is doing so well. I'm so happy. Look at, look at the new leaf. And it's like trying to grow everywhere. I grew this from, from a cutting, by the way. And here's another one. I may actually move this downstairs because all the, fr uh, the friends are downstairs and he's just uh, lonely here. So this is a Hoya retusa, by the way. And they're all propagated. They're all propagated from this plant. Um, and it's, it's a, quite a fast grower, I would say. Okay, look at the new growth points. I'll do a propagation video soon of the Retusa, but I want this to bush out a bit more actually. As you can see, a lot of the cuttings have not grown um, a branch, but they will, I'm pretty sure. So, and I feel like if I prune this to propagate, uh, it will get a little bit bushy on the top, but let's see. Because the parent plant here, as you can see, is branched out quite a bit. So I would say that this is the main branch, but something happened to it and it died off. That's why it's branching out to, to the sides. So if I want to get a bushy plant, I'm going to have to prune it. Um, so there's a shy begonia back here that I rehab. Oh, no, this is a propagate actually. I propagated this from a leaf cutting and it's doing quite well. Hello. <laughs> um, Hoya calistophylla, uh, love of my life. It came with only two leaves, but that was a year ago. So it's a very slow grower. Uh, and that plant here is rehabbing. I cut off one of the leaves because it was too much energy for it. It didn't have any roots when I unpotted him. And here's another uh, growth point that's coming. It's been here for about a few months and it's... Let's see, I give this a 25% chance of survival. Okay, um, and then uh, here's that huge monster. I actually have to, I have to move my body back a little bit because this plant is like pushing against me. So this has to go immediately after this video. I can't stand it. Uh, yeah, ooh. Hello, we're dancing together. How cute. Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, that's my Monstera dance, I guess. Uh, yeah, uh, if, if I left it here, that growth is just gonna keep pushing <laughs> towards the outside. So this is just not very sexy right now. So yeah, uh, I guess that brings us to the end of the video. Uh, in my next video, I'm actually, since, uh, since I've got such a clean space now and I have so much propagation projects that I've been on hold, I'm going to work on that and film it for you. So, so that's coming up soon for you guys. Um, meanwhile, do take care and stay safe. Oh, I forgot to mention that uh, I'm at Botanist on Instagram. And uh, again, I want to invite you guys to like this video and subscribe and all that good stuff. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.